The motion works is sometimes referred to as the dial train because it's located near the center of the movement and right behind the dial. It has a small gear train of design to produce a 12 to 1 ratio. Uh, that is that the minute hand turns 12 times to complete one revolution of the hour hand. Now there's this large gear here which is a part of the time train that actually drives the motion works here with these gears. Now there's also a spring tension system in the motion works that's designed to let the arbor rotate and slip without stopping the clock. That way you can move the hands to make any adjustments to the time without actually having to stop the clock. Now in some clocks uh, this type there's a type of leaf, a leaf spring type tension system uh, that is in the sessions movement and in the Ingram it's actually a coil spring that creates the tension. And hands on clocks that are difficult to move or to move freely need to have these spring tension adjustments. Now the spring, spring tension that is too strong can make the hands difficult to move and cause bending or breakage of the hands. Also dirt and dried oil can gum up the motion works and prevent the normal slippage or clutching action of the motion works. So be sure to make sure that you are working with a movement that you have just cleaned. Working on a dirty movement would be pointless and the repairs would only be temporary improvements and would not last. So next we'll look at more closely the motion works and the differences between the sessions and the Ingram. And the reason why I'm using the sessions and the Ingram because their tension systems are similar to many other American made clocks and even foreign clocks. So if you understand the concept of the tension systems of the sessions and Ingram, it's uh, more equally extrapolated to other movements. So let's look at those more closely. Now here's the motion works of the session movement and you can see that the tension system is, is a leaf spring style here. Let's take a closer look at that. And it's these bowed leaves right here that's pressing against the brass there is what's causing the tension and when the minute hand is attached on this end and you go to adjust the time as you can see the arbor slips without the wheel having to turn so the clock doesn't stop so it's basically clutching to allow the hand to move now an easy fix to the leaf version is to make sure all the proper points are oiled so you would need to make sure that You've got oil placed in here. So that it's properly lubricated. And then on this side, the oil would be placed right inside where these two pieces meet because they will slip on each other. And See now that's moving a lot more freer, so there won't be any chance once I install this back in the clock that the hands will become bent or broken from forcing it to move. So that slips a lot smoother, and it's a good idea to oil that and work the oil in like like what I'm doing with my fingers by make, moving the parts before you before you reassemble the clock. On the Ingram, instead of a leaf spring, we have a coiled spring version. Now you don't want to directly oil on this spring because it will gum up and collect dust and dirt quickly due to the narrow spacing of the coils. And here you can see the slipping here, the slipping action. And then here's where the hand would attach, the minute hand would attach here, and you can see the slipping action down there. And here you would oil the same as you did the other clock place some oil where these two parts meet and that'll work its way in 
and I can feel it slipping a lot, going a lot quicker.